Hey guys, welcome to another podcast. So today it's episode two, of course. So we're gonna do our Premier League predictions. So then, lads, say hello. Hi boys. So let's go on to it. So starting off with Norwich, of course. Josh, what would you say would put Norwich in 20th? I just feel like they brought in some good players, but some maybe we don't know much about. And we can only really base off what we've seen previously from Norwich in the Prem and what we've seen so far. And I think so far, they've not really put up much of a fight and they've struggled in all the games they've played. And now a defeat to Leicester, but it's still a defeat. And two big, heavy defeats to Liverpool and City. So that explains why I think Norwich should be uh, 20th. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think it proves by the media have also put them 20th. I feel like, are they really strong enough, gents? Uh, nah, not, not really. Like, if you look at the rest of the clubs, especially with some of the signings people have brought in this season, they've, they've got to be down the bottom at least. And, like, especially with their record of, like, being a yo-yo club now, they've just, like, been bouncing up and down, up and down. And that's why media put them 20th. And that's why we put them 20th. Yeah, pretty really agree. On to the next one. So Watford, I feel like they're maybe a bit like Norwich. Maybe they're not that strong enough. They brought, as we said last video, brought in a couple of decent signings. But again, I just don't think they're strong enough. Do you think that, Josh? Yeah, I don't think either. I think they've got some good players. I think Dennis looks really good. Sars obviously a very good player. But again, it comes down to how weak their squad is. However, Watford have looked a lot better than Norwich having open get a few games. However, they've not played nowhere near the opposition. So... Yeah, I don't think then we'll have enough, but we'll have to see. Gents, if um, Watford were going to get out of the mess they're in, well, not really in a mess, but what we think they are anyway, who would be the player you think? Uh, it's it's got to be the star man, hasn't it? Ishmael Lassau. Uh, he's, he's, in, he's incredible, isn't he? He's just class. I think that's what will be Watford's way to try and to get out. Like, I don't think they will get out. That's why they're 19th, but like, it, it will just be a scrap at the bottom, in my opinion. 17, 18, 19, it's just going to be like points difference between them. Do you think it'd be a massive impact if they do lose Saar to win you or something like that? So again? Do you think if Saar, of course, has an injury or a club comes in for him, do you oh, think yeah. it'd be a massive impact for Watford? Oh, yeah. That might as huge, isn't it? It's their best player. Like, they're, they're playing Ken Semmer out on the left, Dennis at top, and got no one really to replace him, really. Like, he's their main man. He's like a Jack Grealish. Yeah. So on to the next one. So Southampton is a really interesting one for us because this is our group one altogether. I feel like with Southampton, they, of course, were on a bit of a dip last season, of course, with the, about the Barons they got in by us when we went down. But I just feel like, are they really strong enough, Josh, as well? Yeah, I don't think they've really strengthened their squad that much. If anything, they've weakened it. And they were on a dip towards the end of last season. So you could see it happening. I wouldn't, you know, bode you on them going them, down. But yeah, I wouldn't back them. But it's one of them where I, if they're in, definitely in their teams like that you could see going down, like maybe in Newcastle. Yeah. Others, but yeah, we'll have to see. But I think it's a shout that might possibly happen, but who knows? Yeah, I think they will be in that scrap on the bottom. I just think like if they can get Wardo back to his best, like, Last season, he was pretty much in England, got really in the bout. I feel like if he's up to his best, I don't think they'll be there. But it's it's about if they've got that time when they were up there in eighth place or something like that. What do you think, gents? Uh, I I think they should be eighteenth. They're eighteenth, seventeenth, nineteenth. They're in that battle with Watford. They've they've lost their star man. That means he's gone to the Villa. But they brought Adam Armstrong. He does look class, to be fair. But again, they're just going to be in that tight race at the bottom, which is going to be like goal difference or like one pointers at the bottom. It's going to be a tough season for them. Yeah. Do you feel like that? Of course, missing Danny is going to fill. Of course. Do you think at least fifteen goals a season that really hurt them, Josh? Yeah, because I think Adam Armstrong is going to take some time to uh, get used to the league, and time's not on your side in football, and it might cost him. He might, he might only get five to ten goals, or maybe not even that. We might outscore him, but who knows? But I don't think he will. We'll see. So next one, Burnley. Burnley are always one of those sides. They're always in about the relegation zone, but always somehow stay out. I don't know how, but as you can see by the predictions, sorry, here, they always are in, a, in and around the relegation zone, but never seem to go down. Would you agree by this prediction here, Josh, that they will stay up? Yeah, I just think Sean Dyche always gets to tune out the players when, when he needs to, and... Uh, can only see it happening again because if, if any if any summer that they will push on and maybe do like Europe like they did, it'd be this summer because they've actually strengthened their squad with like Corne, Connor Roberts, 
So, yeah, I think they might yeah. even get further than 17th, but I certainly think they'll stay up. Yeah, gents, as Karen or Josh said, do you think the Suns will impact on their position this season? Uh, yeah, yeah, massively. It's, it's Corn Aker in any side at Dwight McNeil's side. He's going to be playing on the opposite wing. That's going to be a massive chance in the squad. And then Connor Roberts as well, massive chance to add. I think that that's what tips them over to like the Southamptons and the Watfords and the Norwiches. Like those extra players coming into the squad, like just gives the squad a little bit of flair and like that little bit more motivation really to maybe get out of the relegation. Yeah. Next one, sixteenth. We've gone for Brentford. I think with Brentford, they had a, they've had a great start to the season, haven't they? Really. Um, I just feel like they maybe have got the squad, but maybe. Too many players who I don't think personally are prem worthy. I mean, Canos was injured for quite a lot of last season. He just loses to come back last season, of course, out for ages. Ivan Tony, he didn't look the best in the first couple of games, but then of course scored against Villa. Like to see how good he does. But no, I think probably 16th is probably the best spot for them, in my opinion. Gents. Uh yeah, there's nothing really else to cover about Brentford. It's like one of those teams, really. But to be fair, out of our predictions, they come in. Through the playoffs, and we're predicting them 16th. Like, look at that. I mean, it just shows. The champ- championships club we're putting here, they've done the best, haven't they? We're saying, anyway. Yeah. No, I think like it's one of those clubs, like the fans' clubs, like when, especially at home, when you get the fans behind you, like that just drives you forward, especially the players. And that's why they're 16th. Yeah. So then on to the next one, Josh, Newcastle. I think Newcastle just have enough to stay up. Similar squad, pretty much the same squad as last season. We gave them a bit of roast in the transfer window episode. Yeah, we did. They added, and they haven't. Seven really, out of ten. I still think their squad will just be enough to stay up. St. Maximum gives them that extra bit of flair. I think they didn't have him. I think they might go down. So, yeah. Yeah, gents, the question I've got for you is, if they didn't have Steve Bruce, do you think there may be a difference? Uh, I think it would be a positive difference, really. Like I, I know he's an expert manager and I like him and everything, but I think he lacks it a little bit. Like if they just bring in like someone new, like I think it'll just spice the team up. Like they're playing three back at the moment. If they bring in someone who's like playing four at the back, who's attacking style play, because they've got the likes of Saint Maximin, Almer, and Clem Wilson, like you need to use them more instead of just sitting back and then hope to score on the counter attack. But they've done well to be put fifteenth where they are. Yeah, okay, on to the next one. Chris Pius, this one's really interesting for me, actually. See, this is the group one, of course, I've said. But in our actual own predictions, we've put Palace in the range positions, haven't we, lads? So, yeah. for me, Palace was really interesting. Come on, Josh, what are you thinking? I think this Palace team could go one of two ways. They can either really not jam out. So many young players just won't work. Finish fairly low on the table. Or they can hit the ground running with all the quality they've got and finish push the Europe spot. So I think it's interesting with Palace. Yeah, gents, do you feel like they've got the squad in there that can really do one well adapt to this league? Oh, of course. Like, look at this. I know they let go of a lot of players, but just look at the signings they brought in. Like, it's, it's just speechless, really. Like, they've got out of one of the best transfer windows. But again, they had to. They've released so many players. But those players, in my opinion, like even if they don't chat, it's just the quality which Palace has set bringing in all those players, and that's why they're fourteenth in this. That is, they just got to be there. Yep. Next one, Leeds. Leeds are another interesting one because I like to see how they do. Like last season, they did really well for the first season back in the uh, Premier League. I just feel like with Leeds, again, they did look sometimes they weren't as good they could be, against, especially against the top sides. They looked really good, didn't they? And like maybe against some of the bottom teams, they weren't. The best, I wouldn't say. But no, if they can get Bamford scoring again like he was last season, I feel like it'd be another really good season for Leeds. And 13th might even be a bit too bad for them, really. Maybe even a push for Europa. What do you think, gents? Uh, I kind of agree with you, but I think 13th is kind of spot on like, around the area because, like, if, especially if you look at their start of the season, it's not been the greatest. It's been very shaky. But then again, they have been playing against top teams. But I just don't think they're going to have enough to push for that top 10 area this year. I know they got ninth last year, but like, and they have signed the likes of Dan James, but like, that's a bit of a waste of money in my opinion. But I don't think they've got enough compared to who other teams have signed, which are going to make their team better and who's going to make it into the top 10. Yeah. Josh, anything? 
No, not really. I just think Leeds style of football sort of sums up mid mid table because I think they have more quality. They would push the Europa, but I think Bielsa is getting the best out of what he can get with those players. And I think if they got more more quality in, I think they would push you up. But I think the way they play, they're so inconsistent. I think mid table suits them completely. Yeah. So twelve. I don't know how, but we put Wolves. Of course, some of the best starts this season, but. Again, they're one of those teams that can sometimes ground our results. Like, if you look at it under Nuno, they did it all the time. We've grown a large. I haven't really seen that that much. Of course, there's different players just into the league. Of course, I've brought some new players in, like Wangi Chan, of course. Maybe he might set the league on fire. I doubt he will. But I just feel like with Wolves, again, it's just a mid-table team. That I think we'll have a mediocre season. What do you think, Josh? Yeah, I think they've got the quality to stay up. You know, Trail, Ray, quality player. Jimenez. When he's back in form, he bangs in the goals. And they've got a few like Trincao. So, yeah, I think they'll have more than enough to stay up, which is whether they can push you up. I like the style of football they're playing under Bruno Lanka, but it's about getting results in the day. They haven't done that so far. So, yeah, I think mid-table about right. Yeah, Jens, do you feel like the players like Jimenez and Troy Rory got on here, if they if they kept fit and not injured, do you feel like it, they could be playing a form on this season's push for Europa? Uh I personally wouldn't go that far for Europa, but like they certainly would be pushing for top 10. Like that as the carrier of the team, really whip it in from Adama and then him and as his head of us, the trademark play. But I think that 12th is like bang on where they should be, maybe a little bit lower because of their recent results. But like that's usually where Wolves come and like you're not going to really see much more when like they're bringing in signings like a Wangi Chan and like replacement signings yeah. like Jose Sarn. There's average like, signings, aren't they? Yeah, you're not expecting much, really. Like, you can't shoot at the table if you're just going to bring in signings like that. Yep. So on to the next one, Brighton. In a way, I'm surprised by this when we put them here. I mean, they've had a great start to the season, haven't they? I, just, I, I like to see how, they, how good they do. Because if you look at last season, of course, they had loads and loads of shots, but never really converted many of them. So if they can really convert more of the shots they have, then I feel like they could do a lot better. What do you think, Josh? Yeah, I think Brighton, Graham Potter, he does a really good job to get a tune out of the players he's got again. And I just think, I don't know if they've got enough quality to push for anything more than mid-table. But yeah, it'd be an interesting one because they've looked all right in the, start, uh, in the start of the season. So yeah, interesting what they do. James, do you feel like if Brighton have a goal scorer, do you feel like they can maybe push up the table a bit more? Uh, I think the other scores a goal scorer in Neil you know, Malpoy. I think he's banged on like two goals this season already. I think that is their goal scorer, and that's their problem solved, really. Like, I know he's not the quality of what you need, like, you need a better quality, but especially in that Brighton squad, you've got so much young talent in there, and it's just gonna keep them bursting through. And I think that's why they're 11th, really. Like, they're missing like they they didn't... Back the field, yeah, 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 yeah. In that position. So, you've got Trossard on the wing, so. Yeah, I just think the gap in the middle somewhere. Yeah, sounds yeah. tough. An interesting one. Arsenal. Josh's his team. Well, I could be fair, I pretty agree with this. I mean, after the poor start you've had to the start of the season, I just feel like you can't really push for more than I, I definitely not Champions League, Europa, maybe I'll push. I just feel like your squad is good enough, but is Arteta good enough? I just, there's just something wrong with Arsenal. What do you think? Yeah, there's, there's something from the top down to the bottom that's, that, that's wrong, but it'll all come out whether we get a new manager and we'll see if it's the board or the manager. I think it's a whole number of problems. I think there's a weak man mentality on the pitch. And I don't think because of the start we've had, we can get any further than 8th, 7th. So I, I honestly agree. Completely with yeah. the mid-table finish. I mean, I like to happen to this uh, Amazon documentary, of course. Yeah. yeah, Gents, what do you think? Yeah, the Amazon documentary will be class. Uh, no, it's box standard, really. Tenth, they they got to be put there, really. Like, especially with the start of the season they've had, and there's not much, uh, not uh, there's not much really else you can really say about Arsenal. Like, they've turned into like a box standard team, really. Like, Never then. At you the moment, they're down for the really... past couple of years, can't you? As as yeah, but like, you think of Arsenal, and you think top tier team and now we're putting them tenth in a Premier League prediction. Like it just shows like how the club clubs like kind of dropped if you know what I mean. Yeah. This one I do not agree with, but Aston Villa <laughs> in ninth. I mean, especially after losing Jack Regulus, I just feel like maybe Villa will be losing something. But of course by the media they think 
mid table again with put them ninth. I just feel like it'd be very interesting to see some Villa fans. What do you think, gents? Uh, they got to be ninth. I reckon we could go for Europa push, but it might be a little bit biased. But no, I think the silence, sat, well, the letting go of Jack Grealish is heartfelt, but I think it was for the good, really, because now we can sign more players and better players, even. And like, he's, he was a lot of money for 100 mil to Man City, but like that 100 mil now can be spent on other players. And we brought in Bailey, who can easily fulfill the role of Jack Grealish. And then we've also brought in Emmy Buren Deer, Danny Ings, the list goes on. And that's why we got to be ninth in this prediction, really. Like, we're Aston Villa now, and like we're getting more and more recognised as a club, and especially with the signings we brought in, I reckon they could definitely be the push. But Knights would be a really good result really for us this season. Josh, really I, want to know, I want to know, Josh, your opinions on the Europa push. I honestly don't think they quite have it in them. I think I don't. I think they'll definitely stay up because I just think they've got way too much quality. But I just don't think they've quite got the focal point like Greenish to push on because I think most of the players who have been there last season they look a little bit lost on the field at the minute because they saw a lot turning to green especially in that first game in the squad really the but there's no yeah Ashley Young on the wing is that getting you in Europe I don't think so I don't think it is Jens but we will we'll, we'll see we will see he's still in fit so it'll be decent I reckon Everton I'm just saying this one will really be interesting I feel like especially Rafa at the moment getting, grind those results out of Everton I just feel like this could be a really good season for these Everton fans. I feel like if a chance is bang on form, Calvert Lewin, as he has been bang on form, if they get Rondon fit, he's a perfect striker to bring on. And as far as Rafa can get it out of them, what do you think, Josh? Yeah, they've got a good enough squad to get eighth, and I think they will get more than eighth. But time will tell. I also think they didn't improve their squad enough to push for anything yeah. more than eighth. So I think it's about right. I think it's going to be another fairly disappointing season for Everton. So I think Everton fans want Europe and I don't know if they get it. Again, gents, going back to the transfer window, do you think Everton did actually do much business and they needed it? Or do you think a lot more needed? Uh, it was quite a... I wouldn't say normal. It was quite a shy signing uh, of the players which they brought in for Everton. But the signings which they have brought in are like, They've banged really like Demario Gray's the class. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. I, I reckon that will be the pinnacle. Like that will what started off their season, and that that's why they're eighth really because like they could even be seventh and further on. But the signings which they're drawing like Rondon, who's coming up top, like, and then they're under Rafa Benitez. Like, what else do you expect? It's Everton. Like, they gotta be up there. A question I want I want to see you answer for both both of you actually is um. If Damari Gray keeps his form up, do you think there's a place in the England squad for him? <laughs> I think he would, I think England squad four years ago, yes. But I think England squad now, there's so much talent that's younger, hungrier and ahead of him in bigger clubs. I just think it should be so hard for him. To, he'd have to do something very, very special to get into that England squad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree, really. Not going to lie. The amount of quality which... England have now. You can't really be saying that the Margaret is pushing for a place in the uh, in the squad. Really, like there's so many, so much young talent, like Josh said, and yeah, maybe like if it was four years ago and kind of copying you here, but I, I think like four years ago he would have. But now, even well, yeah, if he well, plays his best, I don't think he's going to get in there. No, I, I don't think it's possible. The yeah, next one. On to- Seventh is West Ham. West Ham, of course, had a great season last season, didn't they, in the lockdown? I just feel like this season, I think Europa football will, of course, hurt them a bit with the players. They've got the lack of players, maybe. I know they've won a couple of signings, but I just feel like with West Ham, they will maybe run out of gas towards them this season. I just feel like the squad they've got is too small, and the map, you got to rely on Mikel Antonio quite a lot, especially as Hal is now gone. I just feel like seventh is probably around the same spots for us. They probably will come, but it'd be interesting with West Ham, gents. Uh, no, it, they've got to be seventh, maybe even higher, really, especially with the season which they had last year. But to be fair, they haven't got Jesse Lingard this season, and you can see his performance at the moment for England. But I think they will get seventh, but they could definitely push for more if they had that camp. Like, 
I know they brought in like the likes of Lasic and stuff, which like can fulfill that role, and they've already got four nows. But I think Jesse Lingard is that man who needs to be in the centre, and that's the pinnacle of the team, really. If they have down him, he's like the missing piece, really, and that's what makes them go for like the Europa or the Champions League. But seventh place is a good position for them. Yeah, Josh. So of course now West Ham are now in Europa League. Do you feel like if you're West Ham, are you pushing for Europe more than the actual finish in the Prem or a bit of both average? And I think you balance it. Just see what happens. Like play a strong team fairly in both, and um, I think West Ham have got to be careful, especially the fans as well. Be careful what they wish for because you see what happened with Wolves. Seventh place was it twelfth? Yeah. Just carry on dropping. You got to be careful, but I think. If West Ham's got 7th, 8th, given ninth, I think the fans should be reasonably happy with that. And a decent European uh, finish. Yeah, so. I, would be yeah. I don't think you can expect too much from the West Ham team. This next one, Leicester. I thought Leicester could maybe be a dark horse this season, especially with the players they've got, of course. Um, I just feel like if Jamie Vardy's still going, which he is at the moment, and Harvey Barnes, of course, yeah. at his best, like he was at the Albion, I just feel like if they get the players playing good enough, which they at times they were, then of course I'd honestly think they could be top four this season, maybe not even sixth and higher. I just think Leicester just seems to bowl every season. Yeah. I just feel like with Leicester though, maybe the distance of Dakar and then if it Ian actually before my as best, then that will make a difference, gents. Uh yeah, have a massive impact, but I think the big thing for Leicester, like especially if they wanted the top four push, is the fact that they've got so many injuries at the back, like Fafana, Johnny Evans, and then Vestergaard. They've got so many injuries, and they're currently playing a Marty at the back. Like He's decent, but is he going to be able to push that top four place, having Sorenucci and Amati at the back? I don't think it is. You need Fafana back in or someone to cover that, really. But that's why they've got to be six, really. They can't really be pushing for higher if they're playing Amati at centre-back. Yeah. So next, missing out on Champions League is Spurs. So with Spurs, again, they've had a great start to this season. I just feel like, have they really got the squad to be in the Champions League spots, Josh? Um, I think they have the squad. I think the manager looks OK. However, I think the, the teams above them are just a lot more advanced in terms of development, where they are as a club right now. And I just think Tottenham are a little bit too short. But, you know, they've started well, beat City. So why why can't they? But I just think they'll they'll drop off a little bit at some point. You know, Spurs, typical Spurs. I think they'll just bottle it. Yeah, Jen. Of course, with rumours going around that Son is now injured from his time with Korea, do you feel like that'll make a huge impact? Oh, massively. It's it's Son, isn't it? It's it's the pinnacle of the team along with Harry I think Kane. He's just important as uh, Kane, I do. Yeah, he's, he's got Son, to be up. Kane doesn't get all those chances because he creates most of them, and Kane creates most of Son's. So. The amount of yeah. goals and assists they both got last season as well is outstanding, really. But I, I, I totally agree with you, Josh, really. That if they don't have Son, like I know they still have Harry Kane and Bergvine and Lucas Moore, but Son is that guy who like creates stuff. He's the he's playmaker. Spark, he? Yeah, he's the spark in that Tottenham team. And if they are losing out on him there, they could maybe be dropping, but I think they like they're dropping out of Champions League, really. That's why they're fifth. Okay, now into top four, Champions League. Liverpool. I feel like Liverpool, again, I think it just might be, for them actually now, a bog standard season. I just feel like they won't be as good as you've seen them before. Of course, some bits I think that they'll be okay, but especially as, in my opinion, they haven't got that proper good midfielder. Now, Elliot, I'd like to see Elliot come into the team a bit more, but I just feel like that goal score may be up top. Now that Jota and Firmino are playing up, then Firmino really... It's a bit too inconsistent. Do you feel like they're missing that goal scorer up top, Josh? What do you think Salah feels it? I don't think it's just in top. I think they need a midfielder that can score because I don't think they've really got that in the team. And having a goal scorer midfielder have you. So you look at City, they've got endless lists of midfielders who can score goals. I don't think Liverpool really have better any. So, yeah, I just think there's lack of recruitment. I don't think they'll be able to push. They can push maybe, but not a proper type of push. I think they'll be in and around for a bit like maybe December. I think they'll just drop off a little bit because of the lack of quality in the midfield. Yeah, James, do you think fourth may be a bit too low for Liverpool or do you think that's spot on? Uh, no, I personally think it might be a little bit too low. You know, like you look at the quality of their squad and Van Dijk's coming back and then you've got Matip and then they've also brought Canate. Like, if 
you look at their quality, but to be fair, if you compare it to the other three teams who are left, I think four strive for them because the three teams above them, they're just like, they've just got that extra little bit of you go. I mean, like that, yeah, like as more, you were saying, more quality like, to add. Yeah. Like that midfielder who can score or something, like they're missing something in there to get them that first or second or third place. And now on to third. Man United, I feel like Man United, of course, the son of Ronaldo is a big, big son, as we talked to Lou last week. Um, I just feel like with Man U, again, they, against Wolves, they very nearly didn't get that goal. Though, of course, it was a really vital goal for them. I just feel like in some stages this season, they'll go off the boil a bit and won't be that good. So for me, I think third's probably spot on. Josh, what do you think? Yeah, I think Man U and Liverpool, you could have tossed a coin, I think, because I think both of them... They need a midfielder and they both haven't got that. However, I edge Man United because of the Ronaldo signing pretty much. So I just think you're giving that X factor, that proven goal scorer, crowd lifter. Yeah. Yeah. James, do you follow Ronaldo joining around uh, Real Madrid and Man United? Do you think he will be a huge difference to them or not? Oh, it's got to be. It's Ronaldo, isn't it? Like, you can't really say that he's not going to be a huge influence on the team. He's a leader as well. And that's what Man United were really missing. Like, they do have role models in the team, but like for Greenwood especially and some of the other young players, like it will be such a role model for them. And like he will lead that team to victory, really. And we put them so because again, it's like it's the lack of quality in the midfield, like the starting thread at some points. Like for, as as much of a good player he is, like if you want to be pushing for the top two or even the champions. Unless he's a good player, James. Can't, like, can't pass a ball. <laughs> No, but I think they're missing a midfield like Liverpool or that little bit of quality to get them higher up in the league. Now on to City, of course. So they're second. Um, of course, they finished first last season, so maybe it's a bit controversial, Josh. What do you think? Yeah, I think, again, you could toss a coin for these two. I think Chelsea, though, they got the Champions League win. They're going to be on top of the world. I think they look a bit more organised than City. You saw with the Tottenham game, City struggled and... I know they were missing players, but City missing players, that's not an excuse with their squad. I mean, it's cost millions and millions. But yeah, I just think Chelsea, a bit more tactically organised. I think they might just edge it. Yeah. Gents, what do you think? Do you think with Man City, they might actually, rather than going for Prem, maybe go for Champions League, what would all those wanted? Uh, I think I do agree with you there. I think they go for Champions League more, really, because they kind of want some redemption, really. And they haven't won Champions League before, have they? So. I think they'll mainly focus on that as they have won the title quite a few times. So I think they'll mainly part of their good squad for Champions League, but like City have two unbelievable squads, so yeah. they'll be fine anyway. But I think second place is just about right because, as Josh said there, Chelsea are more organised and they got what they needed. So on to Chelsea, of course. I feel like, of course, we banged on about last week about Sonny Romelu Lukaku. I feel like with him in... The Chelsea lineup, they're going to get goals, of course. And with the Thomas Tuchel's playing style, last thing they've grown our results left, right, and centre. So for me, it's got to be 100% first place for me. Gents, what are you thinking? Uh, yeah, I totally agree with you, really. Especially with like some of Romelu Lukaku, they brought in Saul as well as the decent signing. But Mason out on form. Yeah, and there's the fact that they've got like, they've got winners in there. They've got Jorginho, who's won like the Player of the Year award or something. And they've got like those type of players who like can just do their bit for the team, if you know what I mean. Whereas like City, you're struggling to pick what your team is. And at Chelsea, you're like, you know what your team is straight away. Yeah. Josh, with Chelsea, what do you think is the main aspect of the team? The solidity of defence or their attack? I think it's just all round. Every player knows their job. And I think the problem was they knew their job. They get to the strike and they just couldn't finish. And I think Lukaku brings goals. He brings hold of play. And I think he feeds off the players around him and he improves the wingers and the midfielders. But I think, yeah, I think that's just a missing piece of the puzzle that's going to win them the league, I think. Yeah. Now, on to our predictions. So, as you can see, here's ours. Which one for you in me and Jensen's league, Josh, do you think stands out? Hmm. For me, of Wolves. course, in my opinion, I Crystal Palace and 18 for me. Nah. I'm looking at Wolves and yours, Dan. Um, I'm looking at Everton in sixth out. place. So, yeah, so we'll place. start mine, of course. I, I'm going to put it out there. Of course, I'm an Albion fan, of course, the baggies. 11th um, throw, well done. 
Yeah. Uh, I just, I just feel like with Wolves, they haven't got the results this season, which have wanted. And of course, if that doesn't, you know, keep going to plot positive, I, games, like keep okay. I guess so. But like, if they're going to be up there, they've got to get those results against the big teams. If you know what I mean. If I they're going to get relegated. I think they will be down there personally. Um, Everton, I feel like they have a great season for the got the squad to do. Of course, got the great manager after Benitez. Um, another one where you're thinking maybe not, as you said, Arsenal. I just feel like they've been the, not had the greatest season. They haven't actually had the start. I mean, they beat us six nil with our under 18s, so that's what I'm saying. But that again, I feel like they're a very poor season. Josh, Chris Palace and 18. What is happening? I just feel like the players might not gel. They might just they're all quite young. They might. I know I said they're young but experienced. I just feel like, you know, Smith might not just be right. I think the manager's not that experienced. I just think it might all go horribly wrong. Like you've seen like Fulham in the past. It's a lot of good quality players, but young and they just don't really know how to keep a team up. And my question for you is, gents, Newcastle relegated. <sighs> they gotta be really. If you look at their transfer window as well, like only bringing in like a Mexican striker who's not even in their first team and then they brought in the son of Joe Willock but like they had him last year they haven't brought much in and to be fair I know they got like St. Maximum but especially the style they play and the manager they have I don't think they've got enough to stay up this season I, I honestly don't as much as I love Newcastle fans but no I don't think they've got enough and then of course West Ham you're going from in fifth another one for gents Liverpool in sixth. That's what I'm going to say. West Ham Liverpool fifth, fans. Liverpool sixth. Liverpool. <sighs> what do you think of that? Put down the comments right now. No, I think it was a tough one really to choose, but I put West Ham fifth because it's them being on form really. And they brought in the players which they really need to bring in. Like they brought in Velasic, I reckon he can do a job over Jesse. But Lingard. they're guaranteed, gents. This Liverpool team. I know, but like good. if you if look that team has won Champions League, it's won Premier League. But yet somehow West Ham, are, you know. They've got proven form that's going to get them fifth and Liverpool are going to be getting Europa League. Yeah, uh, but I don't see a clear cut, clear cut striker at Liverpool, do I? Or like that midfielder, whereas West Ham, they have Antonio who's on form, scoring goals. And last week you said Antonio wasn't even armor. a striker, so they don't know what's going on here. Well, but do, you, looking do you feel like him, so. Salah is scoring the goals for Liverpool? Uh, he is, to be fair. He yeah. is kind of carrying them. Like Mane's not really on form, to be fair. Hey, but, come on, gents, come on. He's not... I, I don't Marnie's see him scoring any goals. I swear Marnie scored against um, Burnley. He's yeah, but that ain't hard to score against Burnley. Firmino's scored against Norwich. Josh scored against Norwich. Who else did they play? Chelsea, yeah, but is, is Firmino really that good enough? Firmino, not really. maybe that, not. That, but it's all that rotation. Jota does a job when he goes into that central role. So, I, I think you've been a little bit too harsh, and I think you're disrespecting Liverpool a little bit because... Their quality has been proven in Champions League, Premier League. They've won them both in the last three years, and they're the players who've been at the forefront of it. And anyway, another uh, question I've got is Arsenal eighth. I think I that's feel, fair. I, I feel I like that's not be. fair. For me, I feel yeah. like they're not going to get there. For me, anyway, I just feel like Everton yes, yeah, probably spot on. We're probably back to losing City and Chelsea anyway. Just we've lost to City and Chelsea early on. Doesn't really change a lot. I think we'll get a few wins. I'll finish this game this week against Norwich. We'll prove our lot. <laughs> One nil winning coming. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching uh, this podcast. Uh, put on the comments if you want to go on the video and we'll get you on or hey, even put your predictions on the comments video. what you would change. Support on the last video. The comments were flowing through in the oh, first half. Yeah, really no, no, remember to drop a like on the video as well. Yeah, please like. Subscribe if you haven't. Um, yeah, please ask. Um, peace, boys. See you in a bit. Say bye, guys. In the wrap. Have a good one, lads.